welcome to the city of Seattle in the great state of Washington. We've got college basketball all lined up for you. It's number 21 Gonzaga hosting the Davidson Wildcats out of the Southern Conference in this the annual battle in Seattle and welcome inside Seattle's Key Arena. Not expecting a sellout but close. It should be a heck of a crowd in here tonight and a lot of noise for this great showdown between Gonzaga and Davidson. But we begin today with some breaking news. We're going to send it over to Nicole Zalumas. If you're a Zag fan, you'll be really interested in what she has to say. Well, Zags fans are not going to be happy to hear this, but Matt Bolden will not be playing in today's game. He's still suffering from those concussion-like symptoms, which occurred during Wednesday's game for Augustana. He actually took a forehead into the small part of his cheek right underneath the bone. He said he's been blocked like that before, so he was lights out for a second, but they don't want to take any the precautionary measures they're going to take in tonight's game because he's still dizzy, still suffering from those concussion-like symptoms. So he is in street clothes on the bench, guys. Thank you, Nicole. Craig Heiser and Craig Elo joining me now. And Craig, how does this affect Gonzaga? He's their best player, their leading scorer. Well, I, I think Coach U's got a couple of options. You move your second leading scorer, Stephen Gray, over to the shooting guard position and tell him, shoot, 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 be aggressive to take up for those missed points that you're going to miss with Matt Bolden. And then I think the best option is Bolt Kong playing into small forward. The young man has showed some tremendous upside in his offense lately, shooting the ball from three-point land pretty darn easy. But there's other options, too. Manny Rob can play that position, and the bench has been awesome in the last few games also. And for Davidson, this is a program. They're 2-6. and six. They've been very competitive, Greg, but they're still trying to learn to play without Stephen Curry. Yeah, you know, you would say that the cupboard is bare and that the team from the Elite Eight a couple years ago, there's nobody from that, but they still play Coach McKillop's way, the Davidson way. They run the floor, they play team defense, very unselfish, and they try to shoot the three as best they can. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the seventh annual battle in Seattle now, and every game to this point has been a heck of a ball game, so sit down Enjoy this one. It's Gonzaga. It's Davidson. We'll get you tonight's starting lineups and the tip off when we come back. They have, and, and a lot of guys have stepped up, and tonight they're going to have to have someone else step up other than Matt Golden, like we mentioned in the pregame. Matt's not playing. Someone else has to shoot those quick shots that Matt has taken because he is the leading scorer on this team and the senior leader. It'll be number 15, Jake Cohen, tipping off against Robert Sacre. Double zero. We'll get to the starting lineups here in just a moment. Davidson is two and six. Gonzaga seven and two. And we are about to get underway, and we are underway. Gonzaga controlling the opening tip. This is Stephen Gray, number 32. And Grant Gibbs into the ball game. He'll get the start, his first career start for Gonzaga because of the injury to Matt Bolden. And they go deep. Sacre. We'll go to the free throw line. He's fouled our first foul of the game. And you like what you see in Gonzaga right off the bat, going right inside. Robert Sacre's been a little bit out of sync in the past, but I tell you what, going right to him on the first play will give him some confidence. There's your starting lineup. Robert Sacre, Dimitri Goodson, the point guard, Gibbs, the two guard, Elias Harris, and Stephen Gray for Gonzaga as Sacre misses the first end. That foul called on Jake Cohen, number 15. His first, team's first. And the starting lineups for Davidson, McKillop, Kuhlman, Cohen, Archambault, and Rossiter. I like how you say Archambault. That guy's from Montreal, Quebec, so you got the <laughs> there's little French. There's a little French. French, yeah, there's yeah. a little French in there. I like that. One of two from the line, and Gonzaga with a 1-0 lead. One thing you'll say about Davidson, Craig, they're... They're two and six, but they're well coached. As you see a play like that, Rossiter with the bucket. They take the lead. Yeah, Davidson moving the basketball very well. Archambault giving Rossiter a nice look and an easy basket. Harris fake the shot, drive wide open right to the glass. Elias Harris, the freshman out of Spire, Germany. That's his game. You just don't know how to guard him. If he steps off of the off of the post where he catches the ball and faces up, he's able to put the ball in the deck. Coolman, a little jump shot short. Long rebound, Grant Gibbs. Gibbs trying to go around the defender. 
And he's called for the offensive foul. Charge on Gibbs. Never quite had control of the ball from the beginning when he took it. He might have should have just jump stopped, got under balance, and then looked for his teammates to come down. Instead, he chose to go all the way, and he ran into a Davidson player who drove the charge. These two programs have only met once in their histories. Back in 2008, opening round of the NC2A tournament. You remember Stephen Curry <laughs> dropped 40. Big game. Started their run to that Elite Eight and what, 30 seconds away from beating Kansas and going to the Final Four. Curry was a great college player. Great play there to Archambeau. Well, it was a great offside, off the ball screen. Archambeau uh, cut to the basket. Steven tried to go on the high side, and when he tried to go on the high side, it left the baseline wide open for Archambeau and got a nice pass delivered to him. Possession staying with Gonzaga. It'll be Stephen Gray to inbound with 28 seconds on the shot clock. And I say Davidson's well coached. Well, Bob McKillop has been there, the head coach, for 20 years as Harris drives with his second bucket for Gonzaga. But McKillop's been there for 20 years, and in this day and age in college basketball, if you're not a good coach, you're not going to be anywhere for 20 years. No, and you can say Davidson is pretty similar in the fact that the Gonzaga, they're both smaller schools in their area, but that really doesn't mean anything. I totally agree with you. I think if you've got uh, the right coaching and the right guys coming in every year, you're going to stay there a long time. Brendan McKillop. The three ball. Sacre. And a chance for three. Well, again, Gonzaga's strength at the first part of the year was going inside. And Elias Harris and Robert Sacre have all the points for Gonzaga right now. Robert doing a nice job on the initial break of taking up that space in the middle of the lane, setting down and calling for the basketball. Sacre long. Gibbs with the rebound. Out to Dimitri Goodson. Harris faked the three, drive into the lane, and he dropped oh. the bucket. Wow, we're in Seattle. Maybe the Sonics still do play here. I love it. I absolutely love it. You can't love that. Oh, yeah, he was, what, 30 feet from the basket. Watch, watch the replay. Look, here's where the foul is called. Right Whistle. there. One, two, two. And the basket. Hey, I guess you take them when you can get them. If you can get them, take them any way you can. I totally agree with you. Chance for three now for Harris. Elias, the fortunate bounce. And you know the Achilles heel for Gonzaga the last few games has been what? Free throw shooting. Which is out of the ordinary for this program yes. over the years. The only two guys have shot free throws in this game, Robert and Elias. That's Coolman. Davidson will play for the open shot. Kuhlman for three. That one's way off. Gonzaga basketball. Good Gonzaga defense there, Craig. Well, you know they're going to stand on the perimeter and look for those shots and try to open up the inside game for themselves. But all you got to do is make sure you're right up on the, def uh, the offensive guy close to him where you can contest all shots. Gibbs. Right back to Sacre. Knocked away from behind. Foul called on Steve Rossiter. Number 23. Well, Davidson's first. Got, they got to make up their mind. Robert's too big to play behind in the paint. And both times I've watched Rossiter play behind Robert Sacre, that time he tried to get away with a little, you know, slapping the ball away from behind. Gray. That's just a two. And Gonzaga's lead is five. You know, they say the most... Uh, Hardest person to guard is the guy throwing the ball inbounds. If you don't uh, pay attention to him, he'll step right back in, and Gonzaga gets uh, Steven the ball. That shot's long by Archambault. Ray hustling in the corner. And it'll be Davidson basketball. There's Mark Few, 11th season at Gonzaga, 271 wins. We'll go ahead and say it, too. 21st year at Gonzaga. 11 as a head coach now and 10 as an assistant. Davidson three of four to open the game. Gonzaga yet to miss a shot. And, and there's McKillop. 369 wins in 21 years. 
you know and also in this day and age with big money in college basketball you have to commend the guy for staying at a place like Davidson as we have a foul on Robert Sacre for staying at Davidson all of these years for 21 years these coaches now even like a, a Mark Few they have such wonderful opportunities to make more money go to a bigger institution but yet they stay at these uh, at these places and, and continue to build their program that's old school you, yeah. do, you don't find that anymore I, I totally agree with you everybody's jumping you know Calipari is a perfect example he 